<laughs> I'm hopeful now that Hillary can finally have some time for herself. Like the day after the election, she was already spotted hiking in the woods near her house. And weirdly, she had already grown out a full David Letterman retirement beard. <laughs> There were also some really great historical moments on Tuesday. For example, a record number of female minorities were elected to the Senate. Le right? Let's see all their names right now. This is my <laughs> hey, As Democrats <laughs> seek a way forward, the president will phone members of the DNC this evening at 5 o'clock. Hillary Clinton will phone House Democrats at the same time. The departure of Debbie Wasserman Schultz under the cloud of the email hacking scandal has left a power vacuum at the top of the National Party. Howard Dean, former party chair, tweeted his interest to take back his old job and fix the place. Over the weekend, former presidential candidate, Maryland governor and Democratic Governors Association head Martin O'Malley said that he had been approached by Democrats in search of new leadership. In a tweet storm, he posted, I'm taking a hard look at DNC chair because I know how badly we need to reform our nominating process. Articulate, articulate a bold progressive vision. But the momentum is increasing behind Minnesota Congressman Keith Ellison, who supported Bernie Sanders during the primaries. Presumptive Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer Minority. backs him. Minority leader backs him, and now, thank you, so does his predecessor, Harry Reid. Elizabeth Warren said Ellison would make a terrific chair and picked up the backing of Michael Moore over the weekend as well. So let's bring it from Burling, Vermont, the state's former governor and former chairman of the Democratic National Committee, Howard Dean. Howard, so it looks like uh, the Washington establishment right now seems to be lining up behind Keith Ellison. Why do you think you'd be a better candidate, uh, better, better well, DNC chair for where the party is right now? I think Keith is terrific. I went door to door with him in his first campaign. I like him a lot. You cannot do this job if it's not full time, period. Full stop. End of story. So, um, mm. you know, I, I'm going to be supportive of whoever wins this. Um, I'm interested in it. Um, I, and I know how to do this. And the Washington establishment has almost nothing to do with who runs the Democratic National Committee when you don't have an incumbent president. I can personally attest to that. Yeah. When I. Uh, started when my team started. We had we didn't have the House, the Senate, uh, or the presidency. When we left four years later, we had the House, the Senate, and the presidency. So you know, I think I know how to do this. But I'm, you know, this is not something I've already done this once. So this is not something so, I have to do. So this Howard, is not something I'm going to push people why, out of the way. So what do you say to Democrats when they come up to you and ask what happened? If you look at the loss of the Senate, 11 seats since Barack Obama became president. You look at the House, over 60 seats since Barack Obama was president. 14 governorships lost since Barack Obama was president and 900 state legislative seats since Barack Obama was president. Uh, the Democratic Party, some have speculated in the worst shape they've been in since 1922. What's arrogance. gone wrong? What do you say to DNC members when they say, what's gone wrong? We, uh, well, we have to redo some of the things we had before. We, the 50 state strategy went by the boards. We can't do that. We've got to bring young people into the process in a serious way, not just every four years. Uh, we have to become a, a, a party where everybody's comfortable, including members of minority groups. They've always voted for us, but they haven't been at the table as much as they should be. Um, so there are a lot of things. One of the things that, you know, there's some mega trends that are going on around the world. Donald Trump's election is not unique to the United States. Brexit. Marine Le Pen leading the polls in France, uh, Polish uh, right-wing government suppressing the media as well as a Hungarian government. You know, the problem is there have been a lot of people who have been left behind by globalization, including here in America, and we haven't talked to them. Yeah. And those are the Donald Trump voters. Harold, what, what, what happened? We showed those numbers, just really bad numbers over the past eight years, historically bad numbers. Again, 900 legislative seats, lost 14 governorships, 60 seats in the House, 11 seats in the Senate since Barack Obama elected the president. What's gone wrong? Evidently, a lot. Uh, I think, and it's the last election. I, I, I hear what the governor's saying, and I, Governor Dean, and I. I think he he can point to a record of success as DNC chair. I think one of the other things, and he's right about the full time position thing, Absolutely. I believe as well. But I think that what Democrats are, are missing, we didn't have an economic message. We didn't have a coherent, cohesive message. Donald Trump did not surround himself with a lot of young people in his campaign, other than his children who played right. prominent roles. He did not talk about a 50-state trade. nothing against what the governor, the governor yeah. is saying. My point is, he had an 
and economic message that appeal to a, a big part of America that cut across party. If we as Democrats don't pay close attention to that, we're going to miss the whole boat here and miss the entire point. There's no doubt we need to, not, I don't mean to minimize tactics and understanding the mechanics of campaigning. And clearly, Governor Dean right. gets that. But the question becomes, which direction is this party What's going to head? And what message are we going to rally around? And right now, there seems to be, at a minimum, a dearth of that, maybe at worst, an absence of that as we head into I, I, I've these told next candidates couple weeks. for 25 years, if you can't put your economic message or you can't put your message on a bumper sticker, it's not going to break through in the chaos of a campaign. Democrats right now, what's their message? Right, at the risk of violently agreeing. I don't hear people talking about what's the plan to restore upward mobility in right. this country. It's not just globalization that's the challenge, right. it's new technologies. What are we going to do to create jobs when robotics and artificial intelligence and driverless vehicles start eliminating millions and millions of jobs here? What's the role of education and retraining in, in America? That's the sort of yeah. stuff people have to speak about. I don't think the answer is just tactics and getting. I, I don't either. And Howard, people. are you able to speak to? To restoring confidence in in I'm sorry for it being honest and um, true to its message and then having one of course I mean there were some things that happened yeah, uh, along well, the way well. <coughs> that I think turned people off more than we truly understood yeah I, I, the answer to that is yes and I agree with the economic message but you know, look there's two pieces of this uh, and when I was CNC chair before, there was a, quite a to do between me and the other and the leadership in the House and Senate about what the message was. My view of, is this: in, in, we all are going to deliver the message. The House and the Senate leadership is going to have to deliver the economic message. The DNC chair can do that. I think that's important, but it's important for the policy leaders to do that. What the DNC is about is mechanics. It is about being everywhere. It is about training people up. It's about having an adequate uh, intel I mean, a tech system, which we don't, no longer apparently have. Uh, and it's about enfranchising people in the states to make their own decisions about who runs instead of having the DCCC or the DSCC pick candidates who can fund their own campaigns and then can't win because they can't get the message across. That is the problem with the Democratic Party. But mechanics matter. You can have all the ideals and program you want. And I totally agree with, with Harold and Donnie that, that that's how you move forward. But the fact is, if you don't do the mechanics on the ground, you cannot win. All right. Howard Thank Dean. you so much, Howard Dean. Thank you so <laughs> Thank much. Thank you. Thanks. We great, greatly appreciate it. Um, you know, <laughs> I'm trying what? to think. I'm just trying to remember. What's the worst insult? <laughs> I, have just been, I have just been. This pissed. is right up there. Whatever is up that there. is, it doesn't come close to that. <laughs> you were just called Richard Hostan in Deutsch. I am uh, speechless. And I, what, have, what have I done to alienate Governor Dean? Oh, what have I done? You better send him a, do do better send him a donation he, for his campaign. He says he's anyway. sorry. He says he's, he's sorry. sorry. He's, all right, we'll take I'm a look. I'm setting up for Donnie, but I, 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 you, got, you, you got to send him a donation. Exactly. We're going to take a look at some of the must-read opinion pages. There were some remarkable ones over oh the weekend. God. Retired General Michael Hayden joins the discussion as well. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.